Good morning, I'm Donovan Darius, and today we're going to talk about the purpose of Easter and Resurrection Sunday. And so today, when I think about Easter, I think about two words. I think about redemption, and I think about justification. Redemption. Redemption is basically buying something back to its original place that it once was. And justification, if you break it down, is just as if I... It's basically declaring a right statement. So something was wrong... And justification is you're declaring it right. Redemption, something was lost, and now you're regaining it. And so every, all around the world, people are celebrating Easter, Resurrection Sunday. And we're trying to realize what, exactly what does it mean and how does it apply to us. Well, we know that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. And he had to go through a tremendous week of a lot of pain, torment. And on Friday, we celebrate a Good Friday, which is basically him dying for us on the cross paying a penalty a substitute for our sins and then on Sunday he rose again from the dead and so what does that mean and how do we apply it and why are we so happy about it why is this a great day for the entire world whether they realize it or not not just Christians but for all mankind and so I'm going to break down in this short quick little video basically five reasons and five reasons why the resurrection had to happen and these things will be able to be applied to you as you live out your as your Christian walk or just your life period. Number one, number one reason for Resurrection Sunday, and we'll be following this up with some scriptures so you at your own time, you can go back, you can study, you can look uh, and examine for yourself. One of the number one reasons for the resurrection, why Jesus had to die and why he had to be risen from the dead and what does it prove for us, I have here, is to manifest the justice of God. Now, we know that Jesus Christ, the man who lived 33 years, he went through a tremendous amount of a beating. He went through a tremendous amount of uh, humiliation. And God is a God of justice. He's not going to allow us as his people to go through without him taking revenge and without him exalting the person that goes through. Whoever humbles himself, God will exalt. And so we know we serve a, a, a justice God, a God of justice. Here's a scripture, and it's found in Philippians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, and it reads, He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even until the death of the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him. And so here we have God understand that Jesus humbled himself, even to the death of the cross. He took the humiliation. He took the backbite. He took the whips. He took all the nails. But then in his humility, God exalted him. That's number one. Number one reason for the resurrection and him rising from the dead was so that God can manifest the justice of God. Number two, to confirm our faith. Now, we know that we serve a God, and faith is the substance of things that we can't, we hope for, but we can't exactly see it. And so we have to understand that we put our trust in someone that we can't see. We put our trust in the words of what was stated, that it will come to pass. And so as we put our trust in him and our faith in Jesus Christ, to know that he has the power to do what he said he was going to do, which was to justify us back to God. God's commandment was simply this. He said, you must love me with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your being. Well, I know every day I don't live exactly that way. I may try, but we know that Jesus, he did that. And he was the ultimate substitute and sacrifice for our sins. And by him being raised from the dead, it would be proving our faith that God accepted him as that sacrifice for our sins. So number two, reason for the resurrection was to confirm our faith. Number three. It was to show that the sacrifice was good to God. Now, we know that Jesus Christ died. And just like any man, boy, woman, or girl, they die. But because the sacrifice was good enough, Jesus lived a holy life, a perfect life, an acceptable sacrifice unto God. God allowed him, by the power of his own power, the Holy Spirit, to rise from the dead. Which meant that if Jesus did not do everything that God required him to do, Jesus would today still be in that tomb. There's a lot of religious leaders out there right now. But if you go, there are still, they're still in their grave. Jesus is the only one. He is a sacrifice of God, our substitute, who is no longer in that grave. He rose up. And so, again, it continues to let us know that the sacrifice was good unto God. And this sacrifice now gives us the new leash and title and ability to walk this walk out, to live in this new covenant, this new agreement with God, this agreement of justification, just as if you never sinned, and redemption bringing us back to that original place that God has for us. That's number three. Number four, the purpose for the resurrection. It gives us hope, and it gives us expectation. And here's a scripture, 1 Peter 1, chapter 1, verse 3. It says, 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And so because he rose from the dead, and because our Savior, our substitute for the penalty of our sin, rose from the dead, as we, he said in his word, as we die, he died, and he rose, we will die, and we will raise again. So we're trusting a person, Jesus the Christ, and his word, that as he went and he died, which one day we will all die, he rose from the dead, and he said that same power that raised him from the dead will also rise us from the dead. And so, number four, it gives us an expectation. And number five, reason why the purpose of the resurrection, why did Jesus have, why is it so important that he rose from the dead, is to complete the deliverance and redemption. Here's another scripture, Romans chapter 4, verse 25, and it reads, Jesus was put to death for our trespasses and raised for our justification. And so we understand that he completed everything it was to redeem us back. Everything it took that God required, he did it. He not only went through a week of hell and pain and torment, but he also at the end of it was exalted. Now Jesus could have died on that cross. And if, his accept if his sacrifice wasn't acceptable, still been in the grave. But because he rose, God loved us so much that he allowed a sacrifice to go for his only son. That what he does for us is he gave us a new expectation. He gave us a new hope. And he completed the deliverance and redemption. He delivered us from a life of sin. He delivered us from the fear of death. He delivered us from the trap of sin on our lives. And he redeemed us back to the place that God had from the very beginning. A place of family. A place of love. And a place of hope. And so what does this mean to you? Okay, here's a man, he died, he buried, he rose again. That was 2,000 years ago. But what does it mean for you today? Here's a scripture. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is in his great mercy that he has given us, he's given you, a new birth into a living expectation through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So now today we have an expectation. And no matter what you go through, no matter what, how hard your life is, no matter how sick something is, that when you die, you will be raised from the dead in Christ. And not only that, but even as you're living today, you have a Savior that's not in the grave. You have a Savior that is praying for you. You have a Savior who's king, who said, I will give you the kingdom of God. I will pour out my blessings over you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's the God we serve. That's the hope we have. That's the expectation. So now there is no more condemnation to anything that you've ever done. You're no longer in Christ Jesus. You're no longer in sin and condemnation as long as you accept Christ as your sacrifice and your substitute. And so today, forevermore, and even every day after this, just walk in his redemption. Walk in his deliverance. Walk in his justification just as if you never sinned. That's what he has for you. That's God's gift for your life today. So you be encouraged today. I hope you enjoy. Feel free to post and comment. You can contact me on, on Twitter at Donovan Darius and on Facebook, Donovan Darius um, in Jacksonville. All right, you be blessed and have a wonderful and excellent day in Jesus' name. God bless you.